What's up guys, it's Alex here, your friendly reef dog. And today I'm gonna to tell you the six fish that I think should be in every saltwater aquarium. Now before we get into the video, if you're new to the channel, I put out a video like this every Friday at four o'clock UK time, which is 10 a.m. Central time. So if you enjoy this, have a think about subscribing. Right, let's get to the list. First up then is clownfish, obviously. Now these guys are what pull many people into the hobby in the first place, particularly those with kids who want a Nemo of their own. There are loads of colour varieties, all of which look stunning, they go great in pairs, they're as easy to keep as any fish you'll come across, and they're fine in small tanks. And, as if that's not enough, they can form symbiotic relationships with anemones and corals. Quite simply, they are the perfect fish for everyone from beginners all the way through to seasoned veterans. Number five is wrasses of the genus Halicores. These are some of the most active fish in any tank and there are plenty of reef tanks out there with only wrasses in them. Halicores wrasses are good for pest control as they eat things like flatworms and nudibranchs that can eat your corals. They're also peaceful, get on well with each other and there are loads of beautiful colour variants. All they ask for in return is a layer of sand to sleep in at night now these guys will appreciate a little more swimming room in the long term, but a small specimen will be quite happy in a nano tank until you reach the inevitable point of upgrade. In at number four is the Royal Grammar Basslet. This is another fish your kids will love and may well call Gurgle after the same fish from Finding Nemo. They have a funny swimming style whereby they almost hover in one spot and move forward in steps. The contrast of bright yellow and purple is seriously eye-catching, but unlike similar looking fish like dotty backs, these guys make love not war and will be as peaceful as any of your fish. They're fine in nano tanks, they're easy to keep and they won't bother your corals. Now if you can get away with not calling yours Gurgle, I'd suggest a name fit for their royal status. I call mine the Good King Snugglewomp. First on the podium are hawkfishes, specifically scarlet and long nose hawkfish. They're so called because they have no swim bladder, so they have to perch on rocks to avoid sinking. They have googly eyes that move independently of one another, like a chameleon. They have striking colours and patterns, and they love a small tank. They have an unfair reputation as clean-up crew eaters, which is what puts most people off. But in my experience, they're pretty much good as gold, unless you have an ornamental shrimp like sexy shrimp or anemone shrimp. And they sometimes chase bottom-dwelling fish like gobies, but the risk is low in my opinion, and their character more than balances that out. But if you really can't face the risk, why not get something like a geometric pygmy perchlet? They have all the character of a hawkfish, but with none of the danger to shrimp. The penultimate fish I would have in any marine aquarium is the shrimp goby. Now this could easily be expanded into more or less any goby, but in my humble opinion, these guys are the crown jewel of the goby family. They form a symbiotic relationship with pistol shrimp, whereby the shrimp uses his excavation skills to build a safe home for the two, while the goby keeps a lookout for danger. It's fascinating to watch, and they're the fish that my friends and family stare at with dropped jaws more than any other. For good reason too, they're absolutely fascinating to watch, and they epitomise the uniqueness of the extraordinary creatures we keep in this wonderful hobby. And top of the pile then are blennies. If I could only keep one fish, it'd be a blenny. They're sociable, brightly coloured, reef safe, happy in small tanks, but most importantly of all, they have fantastic character. They spend their day looking for new holes in your rock work to back themselves into, and when they're not doing that, they busy themselves smiling at you and making friends with everything else in your tank. There are loads of options with blennies, and many even eat some undesirable algae that grows in your tank. This is a fascinating reef-dwelling fish that you'll want to take out of your tank just so you can rub its belly. So those are the six fish I would have in any aquarium I set up. Let me know in the comment section below though if you don't agree or if you think I've missed something out. And as ever, if you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for future content. And in the meantime, check out some of my other videos. Until next time then, I've been the Reef Talk. Thank you, good night.